Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. Now it's time to upgrade the electrical system a little bit. So the plan is we're gonna put in two D3400 uh, D excess power batteries, but this is a real world build and it's a budget build. So I'm gonna have to get the second battery, which I plan to put in the back next paycheck. So this video today, we're gonna replace the Optima, uh, Optima battery that is up under the hood. And we're gonna put in the excess power battery. So in order to do that and to make it a nice plug and play, just drop in place with all the old uh, all the old connectors. We have the excess power side terminal adapters and then we have the top terminal adapters. So we're gonna put them both on the battery so that this battery, which just has screw top terminals, the battery we're gonna put in the back, we're gonna leave just like this. But this battery we're gonna make uh, have the standard automotive battery terminals on it so that I can just drop it right into place. So let's start with that. There's a little slot right here. There's a little slot right on the battery. Just drop that into the slot. Same with the positive side. I'm going to grab these so that I don't bump it into anything while I'm putting it in the car. gimbal ratchet. If I want to do both terminals at the same time, I have to get rid of the washer. There we are. Battery is ready to drop in place. Completely remove these. Yeah, probably. So I'll start by pulling these two wires off on this side because this side is unfused. So we're going to leave the fuse in place, leave these wires in place. We'll disconnect this side and then we'll disconnect our terminals, disconnect the hold down, and pull this bad boy out. All right, so it should be a 13 millimeter. Grab a long extension and we'll get that out. All right, let me tell you the history of this battery right here. This battery has no label on the top. And the reason that is, is because this battery sat on the shelf at an uh, auto parts store for a year and a half. And once they sit for a year and a half, they can't sell them to you as if it was a brand new battery. So what happened was this battery got severely discounted. I wound up purchasing this for about $45. And considering that it runs for over 250 brand new, I was pretty happy to get it, but I knew it wasn't going to last forever. Now this battery still has life in it. As you can see, the build date code on it is 415. Currently it is one of 18, so it's less than three years old. The reason I'm upgrading to this battery is because I plan to put another battery in the back. And when you put two batteries in parallel, it's best to put two of the same batteries. So I'm going to put an excess power D3400 in the back 
and I'm going to put one up under the hood to replace this battery so that I have two wired in parallel that are going to be of roughly the same power. Another thing you can tell just looking at this battery is that it is a bit beefier of a battery. This is a flat plate AGM whereas this is a spiral AGM so it's better use of space and you have more room to fit more power inside there. I'm not expecting the simple action of this battery replacing this battery to uh, fix all of my problems. The voltage drop issue is partially related to having a weak alternator. So once I get the two excess power batteries put in, then I can go ahead and buy an alternator that is uh, powerful enough to run both those batteries, to charge both those batteries, and to run the system. So for now, we're going to put this battery in and uh, see if that makes any difference at all. I'm not expecting it to fix everything, but it'll do something. So let's put this in and see what happens. You can tell it's a heavier battery. But it fits right into the same battery tray. Every time I take one of these out, I always like to put a little something on here to keep these threads from corroding. I'm just gonna use this corrosion inhibitor from Gibbs brand. wipe that off my paint. Normally I do it away from the vehicle, I just did it here to put it in the camera's view. Battery is in, let's connect it electrically. No longer need this handle. I'll keep it around for when it's time to lift this battery out. When reconnecting, always reconnect the positive first and the negative last. The reason being, if I take a wrench and I stick it on here and this is connected, anything that's metal on the engine is hot. And if I accidentally bridge the wrench between here and something metal, I could burn up my car. Remember, your wrench is unfused. Got to put the cover over the positive side, and we move on to our negative side. All right, starting it by hand to avoid stripping. Now let's go ahead and reconnect the wire that goes to the back for the amplifiers. Back to the gimbal ratchet. Alright, 4 gauge to alternator wire. If you're wondering what this extra wire that I'm connecting is for, I'll post a link down below. I put on a, a charge cord so that I can use a solar panel on the side of my house to keep my batteries charged. I did that on a video, so I'll post a link down below so you can see that. No job is complete till we clean up our mess and put away the tools.